I used to be an abstract painter when I was in art school as an abstract geometric painter. And I painted a lot like Al Held and really cloned his paintings in a sense for a year or two. And um, when I changed over and started painting from observation, one of the reasons was that I didn't want to be so damn self-conscious about my painting. And when I looked at these, when I was making my own images up, I'd look and I'd say, now, should this be a symmetrical painting or an asymmetrical painting? And I found the question annoying, because you could make a beautiful or a lousy asymmetrical painting, or make a beautiful or a lousy symmetrical painting. What was the point in discussing this? Why not just look at something and paint it the way it is? Plop. And that's what I did. People often say to me, why do you pick such banal subjects? And I don't understand that at all. They don't seem to be banal to me in the least. They're full of magic. There is an agenda here. And you know, one of the funny things about landscape is that on the whole, the weight is on the ground. And the sky is airy and light and there's not much solid up there. Even when there's a lot of clouds, they're sort of fleecy and soft and, and so on, and vaporous, and the weight is on the bottom. So it interested me very much to put the weight on the top. And that means standing under a bridge is one of the best ways to do that. When people on the street say, it looks real, I think what they really mean is it looks like a photograph, and that photography has become the standard of reality and representation now. I came from a very uh, flamboyant household, very theatrical, very, very hi histrionic household. Everything was exaggerated. You never knew what anyone meant. And uh, I didn't like it. And I didn't trust my own histrionics either, and, uh, or strong asp affect or whatever it is. And um, in my paintings, I try to get all that out and state it exact. No, no, that's not the way that air conditioner sits in that window. Do it again, Downs, and get it right this time, the way it really is. And I love that. And I love feeling I have now got it. Banal or not, I don't care. The detail comes in because you have to figure out how to move from here to here, and then to here, and then to here. And every size division, you make this block without any windows and you're not sure whether it really is comfortably that size. As soon as you get those windows in there, you get clearer and clearer and clearer about what it is. And in order to move about and stay, keep these things in proportion, I need all these things. I think that artists, uh, people who are active in another art form, even if it be writing or music or something, are often very, very perceptive critics of a different art form, you know, a writer writing about painting or something, because they realize the limitations of criticism. Criticism can't, can't do everything, it can't explain everything, and it can't make certainties. There are no certainties in art. What is your take on the, the professional artist's life? Oh, it's dreadful. Is it? Oh, yes, it's uncertain and miserable, and every day you feel pressured to do something extraordinary and unusual. And, uh, you know, it has its problems. It really does. Yeah, it does. And, you know, the vagaries of fashion whisk you in and whisk you out again and give you an income and take it away again. <laughs> you know. I will say this, though that all of us that are painters or artists or poets or whatever it is, we spend quite a big chunk of every day doing the thing we really want to do. And that cannot be said by lots of people. <laughs>